that's the trouble when you trick the courses up. You know, I've, I've been talking about it all year. They're design, redesigning them wrong, but they're, they're too tough, and they're setting them up incorrectly. So we've seen Valhalla last, what, 2014? Mm -hmm. And that was when Mark Brooks won. Um, so what do you remember? Oh, that's right. What do you recall about the setup for the PGA here? As far as well, when Mark won, it was a totally different golf course. Okay, it's, it's almost unrecognizable. Okay, um, the PGF come in; they own a quarter of it now, so they've put ridiculous amount of money into it. And um, I mean, it basically, if if they had their way, I think they'd have the PGA there almost every year, because they've spent so much time and money on it. I mean, look at it at the Ryder Cup. Um, you know, they have the Junior PGA girls and the Junior PGA boys there. That you know, they've really tried to build it up, and it is. It's a, beautiful country club i mean it is a gorgeous place to be a member i've got friends that are members there and I, I went and played with them and it is unbelievable so the whole facility is really high class and it's perfect for a major but as far as the golf course when mark won it's probably i don't know how 500 yards shorter or plays 500 yards shorter because mark Brooks was not a long hitter he's had a great short game um so now i think you have to have it both because it's so long but then the short game will come into play. I think that's why I'm taking Cam Smith because he's got such a good chipping game and wedge game. And um, I don't know what they're going to do with the rough. I know it's raining and that that makes it where they'll probably play it shorter and they won't be able to um, – the, the rough will be – they won't be able to let the – well, I guess the rough will grow in a few more days. But the thing is that these are bent greens. And good players love bent greens. They love fast bent greens. And even with the rain, they'll double cut and roll them. They will be lightning. And so I, I got to take someone that's a good putter. Shout out, I should say, to Richard Arthur, one of our viewers who actually, because we had talked last week about it, we, we went over some of the trends and some of the history of the PGA and mentioned the, the you know, Tigers, because we, we talk about this a lot, about how Tiger did not have to go up against this uh, level of competition uh, back then, and this was an example that he beat Bob May in a in a playoff. Like, wow, Tiger, you had to beat Bob May in a playoff. It's sort of like what the U.S. Open when he had to beat Rocco Mediate yeah, in a playoff. Yeah. It's like, come on, these are the guys you got to beat. Um, but anyway, I mentioned we mentioned that last week, and Richard Arthur uh, said Tiger's victory over Bob May was absolutely amazing. Bob May was destined to win that one, and Tiger wrestled it away. Yeah, and it, you know what? When they—that's the trouble when you trick the courses up. You know, I've, I've been talking about it all year. They're design, redesigning them wrong. But they're they're too tough, and they're setting them up incorrectly. I mean, when you do that, it, look what happened last week. When you do that, you limit the field. You you lower the you, the competition. What are they thinking right? about then? What is it, what's in their thought? What, what what is it that they're trying to accomplish? Well, they're so paranoid about length. Everyone is all about power, power, power. And and so they they just don't want the players overpowering the golf course. But then they, you know, they, it's a famous whole thing when they tiger proofed a golf course so over at Alworth when I was a member there. We tiger proofing the golf course. I'm like, well, all that's doing is make it better for Tiger. It doesn't make it, it, it doesn't make it easier for us. You, you're going back, you're going the wrong way. You needed to aim at the majority of people and let the long hitters have to not be able to hit their driver. If they do, they're going to get punished. But they're rewarding a, a Rory last week. They rewarded the way they played the set the golf course up. He could carry over the trees and nobody else can. Remember when John Daly won a, a crooked stick? That's exactly what happened. This long hitter comes along and goes, oh, I can carry all the dog legs. And they're like, what? We never noticed that could happen. So they, I just think that they're doing it all wrong. All right, some other trends for the PGA to keep in mind. Americans have won eight straight. So I find that interesting. Do, do you think that's just a coincidence, Jan? No, I think what happens is because it's a really is the American, it is the U.S. PGA. And so it doesn't have as many national invites. And these people, this is the PGA. If anyone's being invited, it's Americans that live here. So it is the their major. It's definitely an American championship. Okay, well, that makes sense. Also, uh, let's see, Tiger Woods. Now, this is good for Scotty Scheffler because he's, he seems to be breaking all these Tiger Woods record uh, uh, trends. Tiger Woods is the last player to win this event following a win in his preceding event. 
Um, and that was done in 2007. Now, Rory, of course, still could do that as well. But Scotty broke that record we talked about, which winning the, the players and what was the other one? Uh, the Masters? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Masters, Masters, yeah. And in, Woods was the last one to do it. So Scotty broke that or tied that or, you know, uh, was the first one to do it since Tiger. Uh, also, 15 of the last 20 winners. So that's 75 percent have registered at least one win in the same year. Uh, that includes Brooks Kepka, who did it last year. He won on the Live Tour, so that counts. And 16 of the last 17 winners have played the week before the PGA. That's interesting. Wow. 19 of the last 20 registered a top 30 in his previous event uh, playing, so they were playing well coming in, and they were playing the week before. That, that is interesting because we talk a lot about how players like to take the week off from majors, but there must be something about the PGA championship. Maybe it was the schedule because it used to be a little bit later in the year. And maybe it just sat where players had to play the week before, or it just felt more natural to play the week before. But that must be the one major that, or besides the open championship, because now everybody likes to play the Scottish open before the open championship, but that wasn't always the case. It just does seem like that, Jared, that, um, uh, that, that's a little unusual. I, 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 I would put that PGA yeah. Championship almost by itself as, yeah, if, if, if out of all the majors, that's the one that I want to play the week before. Well, that, that's obviously interesting heading into this week because you had most of the elites on the PGA Tour playing last week, but none of the live guys played last week. And I know Brooks Kupka in particular has always said he likes playing the week before a major, which he obviously was not able to do this time around. He played two weeks ago and he won. And he's obviously a popular pick this week, but he's always said he likes uh, – playing playing the week before by the way did you have any other options on the one and done jan or was it all cam smith this week uh, you um, said you would have well, done john rob but you already picked him i already well i would have liked to have taken scotty because he said he's dying to play you know him taking two weeks off because i mean he even went and watched golf <laughs> when he was in texas i mean he loves playing and he's playing so well i'm trying to kind of keep him for the open i still think he wants to win a U.S. Open. He wants to win a major, obviously, and, and he's happy to be out there. But I think he's going to be – everyone's going to be talking to him about the baby and all of that, so he's going to be a little distracted. Uh, but she seems like he's pretty good with. I thought he'd be distracted at the Masters, and he wasn't. So yeah, well, I would have liked to have taken Scotty, but I'm keeping him. And that's good for everybody else, definitely, that Scotty's distracted. Uh, and that's the, that's the thing. He, he has two majors, but they're both Masters. That's it. He hasn't won the PGA before. He was runner-up last year. He did miss the cut a couple of years ago. So uh, he's got a good record here in this event. Uh, but he's 4-1, to one, and as well he should be, uh, even though his odds have actually come up just a little bit. Uh, and Rory has dropped from 10-1 to one to 7-1 to one after the win uh, this past uh, week uh, or, yet, or a couple of days ago. And um, he's made 14 of 15 cuts at the PGA Championship. Uh, he's got two wins, hasn't won since 2014, so it's been 10 years. And, of course, that was right here at Valhalla. So if you had to pick those two, is it an easy pick? Or has Rory made it tougher, Jared, based on his win on Sunday? And again, I think we can't, Rory we're is... putting the odds into the equation as well because you're getting double right, yeah. the odds on yeah. Rory. Well, yeah, I mean, I think Rory is the deserving second favorite, you know, considering how he's really played the last – two times out and I and the fact that he won here last time it was at Valhalla it's a good course for him but but if I was if I was betting one of these guys I would I would still take Scheffler at four to one over Rory at you know seven and a half you agree with that Jan because I, I, I do I mean I agree I think I think he's got the monkey off his back by winning but you know winning two in a row I mean he's gonna play well he's he's got, you know he's confident and he's happy but um uh, and obviously he wants it I mean he both of them want a, want a major and badly, uh, but I think I think totally I'll go with Scotty. Okay, now uh, let's start going over the rest of the field, and and let's hope that some of these players are in this thing, and it's not a Scotty Scheffler show because uh, mm -hmm. you could really bore it out of everybody. Unless you have Scotty Scheffler winning all four majors, so uh, that could be interesting. What were his odds again? I believe they were sixty-five to one. Was that what it was when we looked over it? Yeah, I was gonna say six, I was gonna say sixty somewhere somewhere in that range. Yeah. Wow. So, all right, uh, let's go ahead and take a look. You got Kepka and Shoffley. Uh, so we got to talk about Shoffley. So here he goes, gets off to a great start again. He's got this big lead, <laughs> and then it's only because Rory is the guy that's behind him, even though he was about three strokes back or whatever it was starting the yeah. weekend. You were like, you know what's going to happen here, especially because Rory's so good at this event. 
and you know Shoffley has just not had a good time closing uh, events. And boy, was it ugly on Sunday. It was just a bloodbath. Uh, Rory had probably put the best round of the year together, and mm-hmm. Shoffley had nothing. Matter of fact, he had nothing all weekend, Jared. Yeah, I mean, in, in Xander's defense, like, no one was going to beat Rory. I don't even think Scotty would have beat Rory on Sunday, you know, had he come in, in there in Xander's position. But that being said, Xander did not play well, you know, especially right around the turn. Holes like 8, 9, 10, 11 or a few times where, like, Rory's in trouble. Xander's middle of the fairway with a wedge in his hand, just hits a poor shot. Rory makes a long putt, and it was it was kind of over within the span of, like, an hour. Kepka is the three-time champ, but can he win back-to-back? Of course, again. Uh, he's coming off a win, so that's good uh, for everybody. Uh, he's made all 11 cuts at the PGA Championship, eight of them top 15s. He's also had a runner-up with the three wins. But he was 15th at Valhalla, so it wasn't like he had a great week that week, but it was still a 15th, which is pretty good back in 2014 when he wasn't the player he is today. But anyway, uh, what about – is this an easy decision, Jan? Shoffley or Kepka, if you had the choice? Well, Kep, you know, the thing that I, that, about Shoffley, I mean, I have to say, because I used to say he wasn't a long enough hitter, but I didn't realize, I mean, I found out that he's worked out pretty hard. I don't know if you noticed he's actually got muscle now in his arms. Um, he did gain some yards, yardage this winter and because uh, that kept – but the thing is, I mean, I've, I've been pretty clear. I don't, I don't care for his golf swing. And um, I think that's why coming down the stretch at the, at the players and the other day, it falls apart. I mean, his short game is so brilliant. The shots that he can pull off are unbelievable around the greens. So, you know, saying that, Val Halley is going to be a lot of that. But I'm still going to go with a Brooks because Brooks has got the power uh, and he's confident and he has a, he, you know, they all, all the live guys have something to prove. Yeah. And it's also this uh, Brooks Kepka Justin Thomas thing going on. Uh, at the PGA Championship uh, that these two guys have won five of the last seven wow. uh, PGA Championships. We'll get to Justin in a, in a little bit. and Well, it might take us a little bit. Uh, but before we move on, uh, let's pop up Jared's stats of the week. So uh, we've got top 10 strokes gained per at the PGA Championship the last five years uh, in red. And then in blue, you have top 10 strokes gained per round at majors the last three years. And then the additional stat is top 10 strokes gained putting on bent grass greens since 2022. So those are your stats this week. Why did you pick these specific stats as your top ones, Jared? Yeah, we obviously can't really look at course history here since they haven't played it in 10 years, but I think we can look at just how guys have played at PGA championships. Cause I think, um, you know, a lot of times these courses are set up similarly. So I do think looking at, you know, who's been best at, at this event over the last five years is useful. We also have just strokes gained per round at majors. Cause I think that matters. I mean, these courses just tend to be tougher. There's more pressure on these guys. So just looking at, um, who's been best. You, you do see uh, Ludwig at number one in the strokes gained per round at majors. That's largely because he's only played one major and he played really well at the, the masters. Um, uh, you know, about a month ago. So that's why he's number one on that list. It, it is just strokes gain per round, not strokes gain total. I looked at here. And then, yeah, as uh, Jan mentioned, these are bent grass greens. I think this is only the third tournament this year we've had on bent grass. I know, I think the Masters, and is it was, was it the Houston Open, Jan? I think one of those Texas ones had bent well, greens. They uh, changed to bent. Yeah, well. yeah it, it, was, it, it was one of those. This is the third tournament we've had bent, so we haven't seen it a lot. Um, so that's definitely something I looked at this week. You can see the top 10 there. And then as we um, as we move through the odds board, we can kind of talk about some players that are better or worse on bent grass greens. And as I pop up our picks, uh, I was glad to see that my long shot, I have one long shot at 110 to 1, is Denny McCarthy. Let's keep uh, going here uh, with the odds. you got Rom at 16 and Ludwig at 20. So, yeah, Rom, it's interesting. If, if, if this was his record at the PGA Tour, you'd be like, wow, he's doing really good. He's going to win eventually and then watch out. But it's, it's seven top tens in seven events. That's, that is good. But it, it, to live, you want to win. I mean, it, the, 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 you know, you don't have as many quality players. Four of those are top fives. And the one event, see, this is the problem, is that the one time he came out of live, and play it on, on a golf course. And again, we can get into the whole thing about, which by the way, we're gonna have a video. Jan and I recorded this video about um, how the masters got it wrong. 
uh, with the setup. And so we went over a whole bunch of holes and why, you know, they were placed wrong and all that other stuff. So look out for that. That's coming soon. But anyway, Rom plays the Masters. He was defending champ, and he finished 45th. So, and by the way, the last two years at the PJ Championship, Jared, he has a combined 13 over par. Yeah, which is surprising. Like, I'm not going to put too much into that. I do think, I mean, you know, he's he's won a U.S. Open. He's won on a lot of tough golf courses, you know, Torrey Pines. Um, so I think these type of courses are good for him. He, he's he's tough to figure out because of the fact that he's been on live. He hasn't won. He is. I know if you look at strokes gain total on live, Joaquin Neiman is one this year. John Rahm is two. So despite the fact that he hasn't won, oh, he's, yeah. he's still, you know, playing well relative to the other guys on live. How much that means um, is, you know, arguable. Um, I, I, I will say there's I, I saw at least one 20 to one on John Rom at, at a different sports book. That's super interesting to me. Like, I think you're getting a, a discount there because of the fact that he's been playing just OK and live. So, I mean, I, I would I would not be surprised if, if you know, I would. If, if I was power ranking these guys, Rom would be fourth for me behind Scheffler, Rory, Brooks, and it'd be Rom next for me. So I think if you can get like a 20 to one on him, I think he, he's a fine bet. His personality, uh, if, you, if you watched him at Live, he's, I'm, I'm not impressed with his game yet. I'm, yeah. I'm done with what's wrong. I don't know whether it's because he's got all this money and he's trying to have fun and that's what they want. And they've pushed his name so much that he's doing an awful lot of promotion. And whether he likes that or not, I don't know. I mean, I used to love, he used to just love to just go play golf. And, um, you know, he's got his whole family with him. I and mean, then it's a totally different vibe than going to a to a regular majors event. I think he might settle down and play better now that he's at a real event, you know, and maybe go back to being the way he was. Because I, I love his golf swing. I've always loved his golf swing. And I like his game. But his personality has really come out. Well, I think one of the things I have noticed, even though he has four top fives in Live, he really hasn't been leading at Live. No. Uh, and 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 because you know, if he is, he's going to be tough to beat. But he hasn't put himself in that position yet, which is really the strange thing: is all these top fives and all these top tens. But he's that. That's just he's always behind. Right. And, and well, that's, he's got- you know, he's captain of the team, and he's making a ridiculous amount of money. Maybe it's making it. it could be. Good. Yeah. All right. Uh, then, he, by the way, if Ludwig wins, he'll be the first to win in his first PGA Championship since. Oh. Since? No, nothing. Tiger. My answer is always Wasn't Tiger. That, for it this. was not that long ago. <laughs> no. No. Who it was won? in 2020. Oh. oh, Bryson. No. Bryson. No. no, no Bryson. Bryson, yeah, Bryson, has, Bryson, has, Bryson won the U.S. Open. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. It, it, that it's one. Yeah. Be Brooks. No. Wow. He, won in 20, he won in 2020. It's my pick this week. My top pick this week. Colin Morikawa. Yeah, that's oh, right. that's right. That's right. Because he hit that unbelievable uh, eagle. Yeah, on 16. Yeah. All right. And there, speaking of DeChambeau and Morikawa, uh, you also have Homa and Neiman. Speaking of Neiman. So they're between 25 and 35 to 1. So, Jen, you're saying Neiman is sort of like right now your second choice in one and done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's playing well this year, and he's really hitting it long and high. I like the way he's hitting it. Got a lot of confidence. He's he's a good putter. Yeah, the thing we um, need to see out of Neiman, though, is he must start, especially now that he's only getting these opportunities uh, you know, a handful mm-hmm. of times a year, uh, he needs to start competing better in majors. He did have a decent top 25 at the Masters, but he's playing too well this year for him not to put something together in a major. He's got to, he's got to do it, and that's his I next agree. step. In his evolution of his game, we'll see if he can do it this week. He's getting a 35 to 1 respectable number. Now, you have two picks in here, Jared. You've got mm-hmm. DeShambo and Homa. Now, I know you've talked about DeShambo for a few weeks, so I'm not surprised yeah. that you like him here. With all your other picks, I believe that that's all value. That's what it that's what I think it's for you, starting with Max Homa. Because Max, yeah. if you take a look at Max, normally you wouldn't look at his record. You wouldn't look at how he's played this year and say, oh, yeah, Max Homa. Uh, because Max has not played well so far in majors. Uh, his best finish at the PGA was 13th. Before that, it was 55th last year. He's got a combined 35 over par at PGA Championships. But he's coming off an 8th place finish, which is good. And um, he was 3rd at the Masters. 
Yeah, I, I think I mean I think he started to figure out how to compete in these majors because to me it never made sense that he wasn't good at majors because you look at the courses he's won at the non majors he's won at I mean, he's won at Torrey Pines he's won at Riviera he's won at Quail Hollow those are all like major caliber golf courses so I think he has the game and then yeah third at the Masters about a month ago he was tenth at the Open in the major before that so like he's he's trending in the right direction in these majors I think this is a good golf course for him so I, I think thirty five to one is a good number. For home but, but the greens that's that's the key isn't it too is that he's he's going on greens that he's good at yeah well max is a good putter on every green type and he's he's best on poa um yeah as, as we saw as we saw in our top 10 list he is the 10th best putter in this field on ben Carras. i mean he, he's just a good putter anywhere okay um and then yeah i mean bryson i just love on this golf course yeah we've been talking about him as a potential winner here you know basically since the masters i love that he was in the mix in the masters bryson also finished fourth at last year's pga if you remember he was yep. he was sort of in the mix at oak hill um he has another fourth at the pga back in 2020 obviously won the us open at 2020 in, in 2020 again just a great course for bryson i think he can he's one of the guys that can overpower this thing with his distance off the tee and here's an awesome stat on bryson why i love him this week nine of his 10 career wins have come on bent grass greens wow nine of ten wow so he, he obviously likes the, likes the <laughs> surface. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Well, and plus, you know, he, he get, the way he puts it, he's, he puts it, um, you know, everything's all so technical. And um, and this, you know, he's had new irons. He, he played new irons on the Tuesday of the Masters. And so he's had some time to settle down with them, which was crazy that they came in and he just put them in the, his bag. That, that's unusual. Uh, so I think he's settled down playing them. I, I, I think he's a great pick. He's, you know, he hits the ball high, and like you said, he can overpower the golf course when he, like he did at the Wingfoot for the Open. It's a very similar overpower golf course where he can get down there on those par fives and be able to get some short irons in. You know, it's Max Homer. Max, I don't know if he's long enough, but he does hit it left to right, which is a big deal, and he's got a great short game. And then Morikawa. So again, I, I, we talked about this last week that he didn't have a great. Well, we didn't expect him to play all that well because of he doesn't have the power game to succeed at wells fargo by the way jan i don't know if you know anything but since wells fargo since they're since they are done with sponsorship at that event do you think that is going to have an impact on whether or not they come back as a signature event i mean i think it will of course because it's all about money but i just wonder whether or not they already have another sponsor that's going to just pick up the bill next year well, the PGA have always got somebody in the wings. Uh, the, if it's going to be a signature event, I don't know that it will be. I don't know that the way the timing was, the players were complaining. That's why a couple of them pulled out from injury. And like you said before, they don't like to play. Some of them like to play the week before and some like to take a break. But timing-wise, they they were, they were kind of got you know stuck into that. I don't – Wells Fargo is just not going to come up with that much money again. It's too yeah. much. Okay. So Morikawa – uh, and again, the point was was that if he had played well at a course that really doesn't suit his game, then uh, you'd feel good. And 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 he did. You know, he played well enough, uh, especially compared to all the other bad scoring in the, in the event from from better players, better power players. Um, he's trending the opposite way that you want to see it, but it's sort of like we talked about with with uh, with Shoffley last week. It's not a big deal. He's going from three to nine to sixteen. It's still good. Um, he has the win in twenty twenty, and. Um, uh, and he, he, this is interesting. We talk about Shoffley not winning and Cantley not winning in a couple of years. We're calling Marcao only has one win in the last three years. What do you think about Marcao this week, Jared? Yeah, I struggled with him. I mean, a year ago, Colin at 30 to 1 at a PGA would have been an auto bet for me. But I, one, on this course, I do worry about his length. I mean, he is in this field this year, he's 136th in driving distance. So yeah, it's it's going to be tougher for him than some of these other bigger hitters. The other thing with Morikawa, he lost strokes on approach again last week. Now, it was just it was just minus 0.6. So he was basically like field even on approach. But that's five of his last six events now where he's lost strokes on approach. And I, I, my, I can take my stats all the way back to 2019. He's never had a stretch like this where he's just been losing strokes on approach, which is usually, you know, what his game kind of revolves around. He's been doing, he's been good off the tee. He's actually been surprisingly good around the green lately. So like the other parts of his game have been good, but the okay. irons just haven't been up to his typical level. So that's, that's the only reason I'm not on him, but um, he's a guy where if he's in the mix on Sunday, like I, I would believe in his, his ability to actually win this thing. Well, when you're coming in with a little longer iron than he's normal, you know, I, his best part, part is like eight iron to, 
six iron and he's coming in with five irons. It makes it a little different. Yep. Okay, next group, Cantley, Smith. We also have uh, Clark, Hovland, and Fleetwood. So, again, Cam Smith is uh, one of my top picks. And Jared's uh, going with Wyndham Clark is one of his top picks. And, uh, I mean, th this is when we're starting to get some really great value here. I mean, to mm -hmm. get Cam Smith and Wyndham Clark at 40 and 45 to 1 is stealing money at this point. Uh, I don't care what – I don't care what – because to me, the only reason Wyndham Clark's now 45 to 1, Jared, is because he didn't play well last week. I mean, what else is there? <laughs> I mean, what is yeah. he doing at 45 to 1? And, uh, yeah, you could take a look at his season, and it's, it's – it's, but this is the way Wyndham Clark is. He's not yep. yet put himself into one of those players that can consistently play well. That's just not him. But put him up when it matters the most in a big setting – Last week was not it, unfortunately. With you know, yes, he had won it the previous year, but that's the thing. He'd won it the previous year. He's worried about the PJ Championship. He wasn't worried about Wells Fargo last week. Cam Smith, meanwhile, is playing his best golf of the year on the live, uh, which again is the reason why uh, both me and Jan we both like him this week. But anyway, uh, yeah. What about Wyndham Clark? Yeah, I think forty-five to one is. I mean, I think the fact that he finished what was it forty-seventh last week is an absolute gift. If I'm setting these odds, I'm making Wyndham Clark between like 20 and 25 to one yep. to win this. Uh, yeah. You, you, Greg, you said it, look at his results this season. He, he came 39th at the Amex, the event before winning Pebble beach. Then he goes 41st miss cut. Then he goes second, second. Then he goes 31st miss cut third 47th. He's, he's not consistent, but when he has his a game, he's capable of, you know, having these top three finishes, winning these events, you know, beating Scotty Scheffler at least once, um, so, and, and I mean, this, this golf course is tailor made for Wyndham Clark, who's one of the longest hitters out there. Wyndham Clark is awesome on par fives, which I think is going to be important this week. I went back and looked at uh, Rory's scorecard when he won this in 2014. He, so he shot minus 16. He was nine under on the 12 par fours for the week. And that was with a double bogey on wow. one of them. Wow. So, I mean, he, he just destroyed the par fives. And I think if there's, you know, someone else in the field that can do something like that, I think it's Wyndham. Yeah, he's he's actually my top one and done right now, uh, so I've, nice. I kind of held him for this one the last few weeks. Fleetwood's at forty five to one. This is a better number for him now. Uh, we don't like him when he's twenty five to one, but at forty five to one, I'd give him a, a little bit of a shot. He's played pretty well the last two years at the PJ Championship. Uh, the thing though that's missing, of course, is his longtime caddy, who is dealing with uh, open heart surgery, and so we don't know when he's coming back. And that definitely, you know, you would think is going to affect him. But I think 45 to 1 is not a bad number. And uh, I would, uh, if he gets off to a good start, he could be somebody to keep an eye on. Um, but, you know, Tommy Fleetwood's a guy, if you're thinking of majors, you're definitely waiting on the Open Championship again. Let's get to the next group. You got Hatton, JT, uh, Cam Young, Jason Day, and Hideki. Now, Hideki's got the injury issue, so he's out. Um, but on this list, uh, three of those guys... Uh, matter of fact, I have Jason Day and Justin Thomas in my picks. The only reason I have Justin Thomas in my picks is because, again, I, I'm not going to sit back here and watch Justin Thomas or Brooks Koepka win another PGA, and I'm stupid enough not to take them. So <laughs> uh, that's what that's about. But Justin's playing decent enough that you can see him playing well again this week because this is like his major. Uh, but Day, I really like the way uh, Day looked uh, the last couple times I've seen him. Um, and he is uh, somebody that has won the PGA before. Matter of fact, back-to-back -back years, win and runner-up. Um, he hasn't played well lately at the PGA Championship, but he has an overall good record. Uh, by the way, his fourth on Sunday was his best finish since runner-up at the Open Championship, so it's been a while. And uh, Hatton is actually even somebody that I think could be interesting only because of the fact that out of all the majors, this has been a good one for him. And he's got six, fifth, six top 15s and seven live events this year. A couple top fives, including two top fives in his last three live events. So Hatton is starting to play better. Um, whether he's 50 to 1 or not, you think that's right. That's And he's never had a great resume overall in majors. It's up to you. But out of this group, uh, which way would you lean? Who's your, who's your top uh, play, Jared? Yeah, it would be Justin Thomas for me. He's a guy I looked at long and hard. He kind of just missed my carb. I mean, 50 to one for a guy with his history at this event. Like you said, Greg, he's not, you know, I think he's 
probably playing even better than the results yeah. would show. Like he's he's consistently gaining off the tee and on approach. You know, the putter's been hot and cold. That's kind of what you get with the JT. Um, I will say bent grass is his worst putting surface by the numbers. Um, so that, that'd be the one downside. But again, 50 to one for a guy who kind of, you know, has his pedigree, I think is a good bet. Uh, out of this list, uh, let's take Justin Thomas out of the equation, uh, Jan, uh, and probably Hideki. Uh, so Day, Young, Hatton, which one would you go with? I got to go with Jason. I got to go with Jay Day. He's playing really well, and he's sure came's brilliant, and he's great on Ben Greens. We have Ben Greens where he comes from. Well, no, actually, he grew up on Bermuda Greens in Australia, but he did play a lot of Ben Greens uh, in in the in our championships because they were on Ben Greens in Sydney. So I like him on Ben Greens, and plus he's playing well. I actually think Cam Young is a sleeper because Cam bombs it, and he's from that northeast area. He knows the course really well, um, even though it's down in the south. But um, he's played a lot of golf at Valhalla when he was a junior. And so I actually like Cam Young. And and, and J.D., you got to go with J.D. first. Okay. Let's go don't, over the next don't group. Tap, don't tap me with Cam Young. It yeah, I know. Take right? much <laughs> about, about Cam Young, but yeah. you know what, Cam Cam is going to surprise somebody. He's going to break out. He's been, I mean, he's been awesome in majors. Yeah, obviously he hasn't won one, but he's had a bunch of top tens in majors, including yeah. third, just uh, in 2022 in the PGA Championship. Plus, and, he grew up at Sleepy Hollow on their bent greens, and uh, he was ninth at the Masters this year. Okay, uh, now this next group we have. Uh, look at Ben on Ben on wow. at 60 to one. He's with the big oh, boys. Yeah. Still hasn't oh, won yet. Uh, Sam this Burns year. this year. Uh, so he's the gala. By the way, is Burns also ha- having a kid? Yeah, he just had one. All right. Well, let's see what happens now. Uh, maybe that was a distraction. Uh, so Heath not getting a lot of respect here at 65. Uh, wow. Fitzpatrick at 65. Minwoo at 70. So, yeah, on and Thagala, those are the two that jump off the board here. Just based on uh, – with on, just based on how he's playing – um, he is trending beautifully with back-to-back top fives for this year, and uh, he was 16th at the Masters. Meanwhile, Thagala uh, is also he's starting. Thagala now is starting to be a little bit inconsistent, like Wyndham Clark. Uh, so that's the but that could be a good thing again because you're getting 65 to one on Thagala. Unfortunately, Thagala does not have the resume yet on the majors that's the thing that we still have to see from sahith so anyway what, what do you think about this group uh overall jared yeah uh sahith's a bet for me he's just a guy i'm just gonna cap uh, i'm keep investing in especially when he's at this number um you know just just overall this year he's ninth in this field strokes gain total he's 13th off the tee he's 24th on approach obviously got the win back in september even this year you mentioned he's been inconsistent greg but he has top tens at century waste management api players heritage you know five top tens already this season um and and i i I like sahith even more if this plays a bit easier right like the the last few pgas the winning score has been single digits under par but the last couple times it's been a valhalla it's been i think you know like 15 and 8 and 18 under so i i like sahith a bit better if it plays uh to that type of winning score who do you like in this group, Jan? I agree with Jared. I think Sigala is going to break through again. Um, you know, he, he went, broke through just to get get that off his back. And he's the only thing I worry about him is he hits about three shots a day that are sideways out of nowhere. And yep. so if he can control that, I think he's great because he's got he's got the rest of it too. He's got a really good short game. People don't realize how good his wedge game is. He's got some really good little chip shots that he pre- – I see him – um, I saw him a couple of times practicing some shots that I didn't even know he had. So I was pretty impressed with that. So I, I, I like Tigal. I think he's great. Ben on is, you know, I told you he was my sleeper at the beginning of the year because I knew he gained 25 yards off the tee. So I knew he was going to be there. And he's, you know, he was the youngest uh, PGA, I mean, the youngest, uh, what was it, the youngest amateur ever, US amateur. But his short game has always been a killer. And now that he's on that long putter, I don't like long putters on bent greens, though. That's the thing that's hmm. my concern. Okay. Oh, and by the way, Fitzpatrick is trending way in the wrong direction. Uh, yeah. His results in the last five have been worse than the previous event, and he only has one top five in eight PJ championships. He's well, he's working, I think I do. he's working on his wedding, so he's busy. Oh, yeah, okay. well, I mean, yeah. I 
I I looked at him just because he's sixty five to one and he's a U.S. Open winner and he plays good on tough golf courses. Yeah, I think I think you could do worse just at that number. I know he's not playing well. He's always a tough guy to figure out. There, it's never like a you know consistent trend yeah. in his game. It seems like it's uh, you would have thought he, he doesn't carry it far enough. He's good for an open, but he doesn't carry it far enough. All right, now the next four, we have uh, one pick each. Uh, I have Sung J M at seventy five to one. <laughs> Uh, Jared is at 75 to one. You also have Sibu Kim in here and Tony Finau. Uh, Finau has just kind of been, uh, just invisible this year. So, uh, can't see him really being relevant. Siwoo just seems like, uh, look, Siwoo, you, you, you know, if he comes out and wins, we're going to take a look at his record this year and go, man, he's really good, but he's got to win. He's got to get in contention to win. He hasn't done that. It's just, it's a money though, machine in the top 30. Uh, yeah. which uh, I keep thinking about taking him on my fantasy team, but I just, I just, uh, you know, it's like one of these weeks, maybe I'll do it, but I'm just not there yet. Um, but Sung Jay, w- w- he was in such a bad go of it lately. And then all of a sudden uh, it just snapped. Uh, he had the uh, RBC 12th, the win at Korea and the third at Wells Fargo. So he's, his game is back. Uh, he played really well last week. Um, doesn't have a great resume at the PGA Championship, but that's okay. Not a lot of people do. Uh, and then Zalatoris, uh, look, uh, you're getting 75 to one on a player who thrives at majors. He's been in two PGA Championships, both in the top 10, including a runner-up his last go-around in 2022. Jared. Yeah, I did not go into this week expecting to bat Zal Torres because his last three times out have not been very good. And he had to withdraw in between, you know, those last three events with, you know, the back flare up or whatever he called it. So like there's definitely concerns here. There's a chance he just plays poorly and is never in the mix. But at seventy five to one for a guy like you said, Greg, he is first in strokes gain total per round at PGA championship over the last five years. He's third in strokes gain total per round at majors over the last three years. And like, he, he has good finishes this year. So, you know, he came fourth at API second at Genesis. Um, he's just, he's a guy where I think if he does have his a game this week, you know, he's capable of winning this thing. Okay. Now next, uh, we've got some long shots. We're starting really getting into some long shots. You got Straka Spieth DJ at 80 to one and mm-hmm. Taylor Gooch at 90 to one. Uh, the player that actually sticks out for me here is going to be Straka. Uh, I, I, I just, you know, I kind of like uh, the fact that in his last three events, all top 20s, back to back top 10s, one, one fifth place, and he was seventh in the PJ Championship last year. I think that's a nice little, you know, uh, mix there. And you're getting 80 to 1. Jordan, his game is still, I don't believe in his game at this point. I can't trust him, even at 80 to 1. And wow, it's kind of, you know, I mean, DJ at 80 to one, by the way, Taylor Gooch at 90 to one, he just has never played well in majors at this point. Um, but anyway, wh- what do you think, Jared, about these four? Yeah, I didn't really come close to betting on any of these guys. If I had to pick one, I'd probably go DJ just because of his you know, history. He obviously should be a good course fit. I'm not really sure where his game's at. It's obviously tough to tell and live, but um, you know, if, if he's something close to what he was a few years ago, he, he should play well at this course. Spieth, by the way, missed, it, uh, missed the cut at Valhalla in 2014 for what that's worth. He was runner-up in uh, and has two top fives overall in 11 PGAs. Uh, DJ, uh, two runner-ups, 2020 and 2019. He missed the cut at the Masters and is a combined 21 over par in his last three PGAs with two missed cuts. Uh, he has a win in live this year, and he's coming off a seventh-place finish uh, is the last time out at Live. Jan, out of these four, who would you go with? Sap, I think you're right. I mean, there, I, I am shocked at what's happened to DJ. But again, you know, the, the, the Live thing is a different lifestyle. And he's definitely embraced it with the family and the plane and running all over the world and having fun. So um, I, I think that, he, you know, his best golf may be behind him. Okay, so now we got some more long shots here. You got Shane, at, who's uh, at 110 to one. There's my long shot, McCarthy at 110 to one. Also, Adam Scott at 110 to one. Henley doesn't do anything uh, in the PGA Championship, um, and Connors um, just you know he's he's sort of like Siwoo. Okay, so out of this again, I like McCarthy. Uh, what, what about you, uh, Jared? You got Scott and Lowry. You got 
two major winners here. Uh, who do you like yeah. out of these five? So I, I do like the McCarthy call. I mean, we talked about the, the putting, especially on Bent. Um, you know, Jan mentioned that he is shorter, which is true, but like he has a he came second at Memorial last year. That's a you know pretty long, tough golf Very course. Long. He has a he has a uh, fifth place at Memorial. He obviously just came sixth at at Wells Fargo. So for whatever reason, he's been able to do well on longer courses. I like I like Corey Connors too. I mean, the putter is always a concern with Connors. Bent is his best surface he's he's still a negative putter on bent but it's his best surface and yes you know ball striking wise um he's he's um you know much much better than 100 to one jan yeah he is i mean Corey's. i'm keeping Corey for um like a um fort worth you know because he's such a good ball striker and he hits a lot of fairways and greens and his short game is a little off but um that's a hard one i guess you gotta go with danny you gotta go with the putter even if the Adam Scott is a horrible putter, and, uh, and and Shane Lowry, he just got so lucky that he he's been playing horrible all year, and you know he got he got three hundred points from for FedEx because of because of Rory, but uh, Rory pretty much carried him in that team in that. Yeah, and he had that like out of nowhere uh, week at Bay Hill. It's like, who's this guy? You know, yeah. considering he hadn't done anything uh, or still hasn't really done much this season. Mm-hmm. By the way, in his first six PGA championships, Shane Lowry, a combined 25 over par. In his last six, a combined four under par. So Shane mm-hmm. Lowry doing much better in PGA championships. You had to take Lowry or Scott. Who would you, who'd you take this week, Jan? I got to go, Scott. <laughs> okay. Let's move on. Jaeger. Matia, Mitchell, Hoygaard, Burmester. How about that? That's a nice little long shot right there. Maybe not this week, yeah. maybe at the Open Championship, but this is a guy nobody really knows about. Uh, I picked him in our live and then dropped him, which was a dumb mistake because uh, he came out and he won like a couple of weeks <laughs> later. Uh, and then Jared picked him up, and then he ended up actually with a pretty good showing just recently. Uh, so he's done really well on live this year with three top fives and a win. He won twice on the Euro Tour to end 2023. So he's somebody to keep an eye on, uh, Dur- uh, Dean Burmester. Uh, and uh, this will be his fourth PJ Championship. Out of this group, um, you would normally think at this point, Jaeger and Batia would be the ones that you'd gravitate towards. But uh, overall, if you had one pick out of these five, who would it be, Jared? Yeah, it'd be Akshay for me. Um I, I think he's a guy who eventually will win a major. Now, it's, it's probably too early for that. But he did win a junior event at this golf course, which obviously is uh, something Matt Fitzpatrick did at uh, the country club before winning his U.S. Open. So there's a bit of a parallel there. So I think I, I think Akshay's a good long shot bet. Jan, who would you take out of this group? Oh, I got to go with Nikolai. Nikolai bombs it. You got to go with someone long. Um, I don't. I know he doesn't know the golf course, but you know. I mean, I, I think uh, he, he hits it really, really well. Uh, so as far as more long shots, um, uh, you got Alex Norin, who's having a really good season, but uh, he's never played well in PGA Championships. Uh, but uh, he's really putting together a nice run. Tom Kim is 150 to one. Wow, <laughs> as his game uh, just. Uh, kind of not been all that look at patrick reed at 150 to one i mean talk about some of these the rest of these long shots uh because uh, we can even go down the board chris kirk's having a really good year keegan bradley's won a pga matter of fact he won it in his very first try and uh, justin's had a terrible season he's 250 to one uh cam davis actually has a uh, he's coming in with what a fourth last year at the pga championship tigers 300 to one um, so out of all these uh, other long shots, who else uh, were you keeping an eye on for this week, Jared? Yeah, so Cam Davis always interests me. I think he's just super talented. Um, my my guy, though, is actually Keegan Bradley. Um, you know, he, his putting has been abysmal lately, which is why the finishes have been bad. But the ball striking has been okay. Actually, the last two events at, at Heritage, he gained 4.1 strokes on approach. And then at Wells Fargo, he gained 4.8 strokes on approach. So the iron play has actually been good. And then he loves bent grass greens. He is third best in this field on our, 
uh, list the top 10 on bent grass greens where he's a negative putter on Bermuda and Poa. So I, th- I think getting back on bent grass, if they can, you know, flip the putting around. And then again, the iron play has actually been pretty good the last two weeks. Yeah. Well, he grew up in Massachusetts and up there in up Northeast where all the greens are, are bent. Uh, before I go, oh, cause I want to get you, get your, uh, your one and done's let's, let's do that. Jared, because Jan, you're going with Cam Smith and Joaquin Neiman as your top two uh, with Cam Smith right now as your top choice, correct? Correct. Uh, I've got Clark, Morikawa, Kepka, and M as my top four one and duns with Clark right now leading the pack. Jared, who do you like in one and duns? Yeah, I'm going to use John Rahm, I think, because I I think you're going to see Brooks Kepka be like 30 to 40 percent owned. He's just going to be super, super popular. And I do still have Brooks. I think he's a good play. But um, I think Rahm is going to be half as owned as Brooks. So I'm going to kind of play play that angle and, and hope hope Rahm can just beat Brooks. I had I, I had Rory last week, by the way. So I'm wow. coming, off the, coming off the win. Wow. I like, I like Rahm. Jan, we'll talk to you again, I guess, uh, hopefully no later than – the U.S. Open week, and again, you're going to go there, so we'll get an opportunity yep. to uh, catch up with you then. And yep. uh, we're also, again, we're going to remind everybody that we're going to uh, post that video sometime in the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, we had your take on the Masters, so look out for that, um, and that, that'll wrap it up. So, Jan, appreciate your time as always. Yep, thanks. Good to see you guys. Yes, Jared, we'll talk to you again next week. Yep, enjoy the PGA, guys. Yep, enjoy. Thanks, thanks everybody.